incredible guests. And we have another one right now. Mahasha Rampedi, the editor-in-chief of African Times, is here with us in our rooftop studio to share his thoughts on the BRICS and what it stands for. Now, let's start off with just how popular the BRICS summit has been this year. Over 40 countries want to be a part of this group. Why is it so popular, do you think? Look, we're dealing with a watershed BRICS summit. You know that ahead of the start of the BRICS summit, you had 20 plus countries lining up to join the BRICS summit. However, if you look at the agenda, the BRICS summit for the first time in as many years was scheduled to discuss the expansion of the BRICS bloc to um, decide on the de-dollarization of the, the world and to also decide on how to approach geopolitics. Mm -hmm. It has never happened before in the history of the BRICS summit that you have the summit and its leaders sitting down despite all the enormous pressure from the West. Ahead of the summit, you had uh, the West threatening South Africa with removal from Agoa, threatening uh, India with uh, uh, you know, sanctions if they were to continue associating with President Putin. They imposed uh, a tariff barriers on, uh, 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 on China and orchestrated the so-called arrest warrant against President Putin. They tried every trick in the book to try and sabotage or create a crisis around this summit. However, to their credit, the BRICS members, they withstood all this pressure, met here in Johannesburg, and if you check what happened on the first day of, of, of the summit, they spoke in one voice, they promised to debate the, and finalize the issue of the expansion of the bloc. They promised to decide on alternative payment mechanisms. And they also decided to push for the reform of the U UN Security they, they Council. Say, sorry Those were very first. much important. Yeah, they, they say timing is everything. Why now are these things only just being discussed? Why not in the, in the past? Why now? Look, a lot has happened in, in geopolitics. You would know that for a long time, the uh, international order was a unipolar world led by America. They called the shorts. But if you check what ha has happened in recent years, you had the rise of China, which counterbalanced the world economic systems. You had Russia proving militarily in Ukraine that it's not a pushover. And it, it went toe to toe against NATO and succeeded. So you had the West, which for a long time had been using uh, the dollar or the financial systems as well as the military might to dictate terms. But now you have Russia and China on the one side, counterbalancing militarily and economically. So the, 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 the world or the developing world or the global south have now for a long time, I mean for the first time, realized that they are no longer at the mercy of the West. There is the, the, the BRICS Development Bank. They don't have to be vulnerable and literally beg the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank to, to, to get any loans. For the first time, they don't have to be vulnerable and literally dance to the tune of the Americans simply because if they dare in, uh, uh, implement an independent foreign policy, they will then be attacked militarily. Mm -hmm. There's Russia to protect them, there's China to protect them and give them alternative loans mm -hmm. if they don't want to be forced to implement uh, foreign policy, the foreign policy of the West. And speaking of geopolitical stability and balance, Many African countries are potentially new members of the BRICS. What does that mean for the continent's economy and stability? Look, it means a lot. Mm -hmm. If you had Algeria in the north, which is a regional, a regional power, you have Nigeria in the west, which is a regional power, and now you're going to have Egypt in the north also as a regional power, you are talking about big powers on the continent. They are now going to potentially join forces with Saudi Arabia, join forces with Iran, join forces with Argentina, Malaysia. They're talking about regional powers from the global south, which together, when they join the current uh, uh, BRICS member states, who 
at least as we speak now, they account for at least 32 percent of the global GDP. They account for more than 40 percent of the global population. When you bring all those new countries into the picture, automatically you are going to give the West and their multilateral institutions, especially the G7, a run for their money. You are talking about countries which combined, they've got the oil, they've got the resources, they've got the technology, they've got governance systems, they've got the military might. So it, it's important for Africa because for a long time, Africa was vulnerable to the West. They did as they pleased. Look what's happening in the Sahel now. You had France being there for a very long time, but the Sahel was never a peaceful environment. If you go to Niger now, there is a coup, but that coup, coup is popular. It's one of those popular coups. Why? Because France for a long time did as it pleased in the Sahel without necessarily developing uh, uh, the region. You go to Mali, you go to Burkina Faso, you had popular coups. It's, it's, it's one of those rare phenomena where um, uh, uh, democracy appears to have failed the people. And as a result, Africans are now uniting behind young leaders who are leading popular coups, but at the same time, sending neo-colonialists back home. They are saying to their people that, look, we had to intervene militarily. Why? Because democracy or the people who were there, the people which, uh, I mean, who uh, Ibrahim Traor, the Burkina Faso president at the Russia-Africa summit, called Western puppets. He said, you are sitting with a lot of Western puppets who are failing the people and using our natural resources to line their pockets and to sustain a neo-colonial agenda. So, 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 so when you have all these com uh, countries now, having a chance to join BRICS is more of an umbrella for them. They were sitting in the sun, they were sitting in the rain, and now they have a chance to get an umbrella and work alongside the BRICS member states who already are a, a force to be reckoned with. Well, as you say, I think a lot of people are watching BRICS, not just with excitement and anticipation, but also those watching with trepidation as well. Thank you so much for coming to speak to us today. Really appreciate your time. We've been speaking to Mahasha Rampedi, the editor-in-chief of African Times. Thank you so much. Have Thanks a beautiful day. Thanks Thank for you. Afrique Media. Le Monde. C'est nous.